Those who will go to heaven, part 2. First lesson, St. Luke chapter 18, verse 22. Second lesson, St. Luke chapter 14, verse 33. Golden text, St. Luke chapter 12, verse 33. Quote, Now, when Jesus heard these things, he said unto him, Yet lackest thou one thing, sell all thou hast, and distribute to the poor, and thou shalt have treasure in heaven, and come, follow me. Last week, we told you certain signs that those who will go to heaven shall bear. That was the first part, and today we give you the second part. You can now see why our Lord Jesus Christ said that it is difficult for a rich man to enter into the kingdom of God. To them, the God of this world is nothing else but money. They believe that without money, you are lost. If you tell them that one who loves the wealth of this world will not go to heaven, they laugh you to scorn and tell you that heaven means comfortable living which money provides. They have eyes, but they cannot see. They have ears, but they cannot hear. They have brains, but they cannot reason because they have been led astray by the author of confusion, the Satan. How then can people who put their hearts in, in the riches of this world go to heaven? Did not I tell you that there are those who will be taken alive to heaven and those who will inherit the earth and those who will go to hell? You may find some people with bags of money today, but before they know where they are, the money has all been spent. People take this to be misfortune and attribute it to the power of the evil spirit. Yes, the money finishes because he gives it away freely at any time. He is not responsible for this action. It is because his kingdom is not of this earth and he is laying up treasures in heaven. As I said before, it will, the will and the power to do this does not come from anybody, it comes from above. If you are this type of person, you will go to heaven. The children of God does not regard money as anything in this life. In spite of this, they don't lack money, rather money finds them. But one thing is certain, they are never in peace if they do not distribute it. People say that if you do the work of God, you will be perpetually poor. This is false. The children of God are banks themselves and their work is to give out money left and right to others. If you examine the different tribulations that confronts you, you will see that it is due to your actions. People will always advise you wrongly and will tell you that if you give alms to others freely, you have no gain. You will only become poor in the end. You take their wrong advice and you stop giving alms. This works against you. You will be in want. The children of God should therefore be contented with any possession that God has placed them in life. If you say that you are tired of doing good and stop doing it, you can't enter into the kingdom. What helped the Gentiles to have a share in this kingdom? It was through Cornelius, the commander of an Italian army, who was giving arms to people. The people of the world laugh at a man who gives arms freely because they say that he is bound to be poor and wretched in the end. Brethren, you have been told that what God loves is what the world hates and vice versa. If you keep on, if you keep all other laws such as honor your father and mother etc, 
yet you do not give alms, you have no share in the kingdom of heaven. Suppose you pray for someone who is hungry and penniless, and after the prayer end, you told you, you after the prayer and the word of God, you send him away saying, God be with you. Which God? What helped Abraham? It was generosity. By giving freely, Lot also was saved. When the two angels were sent to destroy Sodom and Gomorrah, they called at the house of Abraham. They were angels in, in the form of human beings. And neither Abraham nor Sarah knew this. But as soon as Sarah saw them, she prepared food for them. This showed that Abraham and Sarah were children of God. As they were eating, the angels told them about their mission to Sodom and Gomorrah. Then Abraham mentioned Lot, his nephew, to them and begged them to save him and his house. The angels agreed to save them and went their way. When they reached Sodom and Gomorrah, Lot treated them with the same generosity as Sarah did. The angels told them that they came to destroy the cities, but that they will be saved. Lot and his house were warned not to turn back while going out of the city. Lot's wife, Lot's wife met her doom because she turned back when she started to think of her box of trinkets and she became a pillar of salt. You can now see clearly our Lord's lesson on how hard it is for a rich man to go to heaven. A man who loves money cannot love God. Money is nothing. We think money is important. Has it got hands and feet? It is unwise to bury your, our minds in money. After all, Nigerian coins are different from those in Ghana, Gambia, etc. Even in Nigeria, how many times the currency note has been changed? Don't think of money as God. Anybody who does not put his heart on, on money is the person that money goes to. This indicates that he is a child of God and that his duty is to give freely to the poor. Some people complain that some people complain of having lots of money in their dreams, yet in real life they are poor. Yes, because their because their minds are on money. So each time they close their eyes they dream of, about money. I told you that the children of God are very rich. Money means nothing to them. Job declared that he came into the world naked and naked will he return. We came with nothing into this world. We shall go with nothing. Blessed are the poor in spirit. That is the reason why we have the teachings from our Lord Jesus Christ. He said, Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. They that come from heaven do not regard money as anything. The children of the heavenly kingdom have no money in their pockets, but when they want something, their father send them checks. The heavenly children are the top roof. The heavenly children are the top root of the family of many children. Everybody else feeds them without caring to know where the money comes from. In short, they take them as their bank. Strangers are always coming to the house and the Lord gives them the ability to care for them 
the heavenly children don't draw money from this earthly bank, but from the heavenly bank. When they are in difficulty, they find that nobody helps them but God and his angels. Whenever you give alms, you are placing your wealth in heaven. When you see a person who is fond of giving alms freely, know that such a person is from heaven and will be taken alive to heaven. He can never be at rest if he doesn't give his neighbor what he lacks. If he has but one cup of Gary, he shares it with everybody and he can never be alone in a place. If you give him a small room to sleep, he will call everyone in. The power to do this comes from above. People who come from heaven do not attach any importance to agreement papers when transacting business with others. They know that God himself is the agreement. These people never claim anything as their own. If they work for the government, they use their money to help others who complain of being in difficulty. Should they give a loan to someone, the person will not care to return it. Instead, they abuse the giver. People always like to borrow money from them because they will never ask for it again. The children of God are always cheated by others and because of this they are always blessed by God. First lesson, St. Luke chapter 18 verse 22. Now when Jesus heard these things he said unto them, Yet lack thou one thing, sell all that thou hast and distribute to the poor, and thou shalt have treasures in heaven, and come and follow me. Brethren, do you see the truth? Tell me then how many rich people will go to heaven. People seem to think that when a man is rich, he is in heaven. They say that if you have no money, you cannot enter heaven. A rich man becomes a murderer. What are you doing with money in heaven? A man is wealthy because he does not use his money in giving alms and feeding the poor. A rich man finds it difficult to give out even five shillings to a person who is in need. He complains of lack of money. Now, if the person in need dies, though through lack of help from the rich man, that rich man becomes a murderer because he refused to render help. A person who can save up to 40 naira hates man and God. All those who are created for destruction always have the interest of money in their hearts and they cannot do anything free of charge. If they are asked to sing or dance, they first want to know whether they will be paid for it. Now, these same people will turn round and say that when they die, they will go to heaven. Who will take them to heaven? The first lesson says that you must sell all that you have and give the money to others. All those who are meant for heaven use their money, voice, strength and health for the service of others. Those who can read and write must teach those who cannot. If you are well, use your health to make others well. If a person has no faith, go and give him faith. A man who has no clothes, give him from your trunk which is full of clothes. Why not give them out? Let us obey these instructions so that we may go to heaven. We are but storekeepers of our father's treasure house and we are to give out anything as required by others. If it is faith, 
if it is intelligence or if it is gospel that is wanted we must give them out freely regard all things as belonging to the poor and must be distributed our lord jesus christ knew that the world had nothing to offer him so he stored his wealth in heaven go and distribute what you have and follow christ second lesson st luke chapter 14 verse 33 so likewise whosoever of you that forsake not all that he had he cannot be my disciple yes you say that you want to go to heaven you cannot go there with the thought of worldly wealth christ says that we must we must surrender all things of the world before we can follow him many of you must have met beggars on the way as you were coming to the church you did not give them anything your coming to church means nothing because you do not know they are christ who is who is the head of the church you are hurrying to attend do you remember the incident which christ said to the people of his right hand go to the eternal joy prepared for you because i was hungry and homeless and you cared not for me he also said to the people on his left hand go to eternal destruction because when i was hungry and homeless you did not care for me in as much as you did for the homeless ones for the hopeless ones you did it to me if you have a house and you meet someone without one house him name the person who has surrendered all that he has and followed christ i tell you there is none all the 12 disciples of christ surrendered all that they had they left their wives mothers and left their canals nets etc they sold all their belongings and the money was given to the poor matthew was a rich tax collector as well as levi they all put their belongings into the common purse this is a revelation not a gospel saint paul said things that would have been gained to me i count them at but loss for the sake of the kingdom what will be your gain if on the eventful day we are left behind do you want to be left behind people witness enoch and elijah taken up alive our lord jesus christ after blessing his disciples was taken up in front of them those from heaven come down here to work and return to heaven afterwards it is just like an expatriate who comes to who comes over to africa to work and return to his country at the end of his contract many of us now sitting in this room come from different places we may stay we, we may stay at these places to do different businesses and have children but one day we may decide to return to our different places of birth it is exactly so with the heavenly children one day they will go back to heaven where they belong those that will go back to heaven are not many if you do not give freely to the poor you cannot climb up even as far as this roof the power to do these things doesn't come from us but from above people begin to ask whether there are such people in the world today yes god has prepared them from the beginning of the world brethren this is not a good gospel but a revelation of the truth about those who intend going to heaven if you have the noble qualities given here continue with them for you are among those who will go to heaven 
if you do not have these qualities don't struggle to do them because you your because your name is not among those who are going to heaven i tell you these things because i have already promised that i will explain the three categories to you you see members of other churches say that they will go to heaven when heaven wants only 144,000. Those who will go up to heaven are those who come from heaven. Some said that if their parents had lived till this generation, they would have gone to heaven. But I tell you, if they were not meant for heaven, they won't go. Golden text, St. Luke chapter 12, verse 33. Sell that ye have and give on. Provide yourselves bags which wax not old. A treasure in the heavens that faileth not. Where no thief approach set, neither moth corrupted. If we, are, if we have Europeans in our midst today, they will surely send home anything they have that they attach importance to, at least for security purpose. It should be the same with you. Every good thing that Christ did was stored for him in heaven. All those who are heavenly give all that they have to the poor, knowing that they are but strangers here on earth and will go back to heaven. Don't deliver this gospel to the rich person, for he will lock you up. Don't give this gospel to the people of the world, for they will laugh at you. I am not, ask, I am not even asking you to practice this gospel, because you can't practice it. Look at the young lawyer who asked our Lord Jesus Christ what he should do to inherit the kingdom of God. When he was told to sell all and give to the poor, he was greatly disturbed and went away sorrowfully. Those of the earth only think of how to get rich. The heavenly ones think of heavenly glories and how to please God. If you were not meant for the kingdom, but after hearing this gospel, you decide to sell all you have and give the money to the poor, you will find that in a short time you will go back to your former life. There are people here in Brotherhood who sold all they had but are now looking for these things again. Don't worry yourself. As a rich man, you find yourself penniless because of arms giving you are storing in the heavenly bank. Our Lord Jesus Christ did all his good work without counting the cost because he knew what he was doing. Now that this gospel reveals to you where you stand, Continue doing good so that when the great day comes, you will go up to meet your wealth where no moth or rust don't destroy. Thieves or moths may break into the earthly bank. There is no other bank for the heavenly children than helping the needy. You don't do them to the poor but to God who will reward you. Of what use is your preaching if you do not give water to the thirsty and food to the hungry one? Heavenly children have no other assignment than, than to do this. The good Samaritan had his hope in heaven. He was not a rich man, whereas the other two well-to-do people who passed by the wounded man had offered no help, have no hope for heaven. The Good Samaritan is a good man of God. In brotherhood, our hope is in heaven, 
That is why we are instructed to give alms because it might happen like a cinema and this and it is done forever. People from your family often tell you that the money you would have used for the family is it is used for your brethren in your church. The power to do this does not come from you but from above. Brethren, we shall not take you further. Those who have ears to hear, let them hear. May the Lord bless his holy words. Amen. End of quote. Peace in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Thank you, Father.